Hey, Joe. Well, it was a much anticipated move. Uh, China trimmed its key lending rates. This comes after it cut to interest rates uh, last week. And China managed to do the unthinkable by lowering interest rates and injecting even more money into the economy. China is witnessing bank runs again. A bank in Henan ran out of cash. Apparently, they are unable to withdraw money, their own money. From banks. So this year just keeps getting more challenging. Severe weather. Let's start in the south. Obviously, the temperatures uh, in Sichuan province above 40 degrees Celsius, above 104 degrees Fahrenheit for a number of days uh, is caused uh, the record drought. And that, of course, is shrinking the water levels in the biggest waterway in China, the Yangtze River. The GDP number, which obviously disappointed many, uh, was it that bad? I mean, 2.5% GDP growth. China really needs about five, five and a half percent growth to do all the things that it needs to do. And just finally, the tensions uh, as it relates to, to, to Taiwan. This is a nationalist issue for the Chinese, in addition to be so strategically important that, that they want to demonstrate to the Chinese people, we will fight to get Taiwan back. Booms of rockets and trails of smoke fill the sky on the Chinese coast near Taiwan. But the other is the economy. The economy is having some real issues. The scale of the crisis that China is about to experience is much bigger than you imagine. China is about to have its own version of the 2008 housing crash. The unthinkable habit. A virus spread throughout the world and the Chinese government implemented a zero COVID policy. So the Chinese developers began to crumble. How does Beijing and their leader in Beijing, how does he look within giving the grim data of the day? Actually, President Xi has made a major uh, campaign of his to start looking inward. It's called the deal circulation strategy, where he wants to have the domestic economy become the primary focus for China and the source of growth going forward. Unfortunately, so much has collapsed within China that the domestic economy uh, is nowhere to be found, especially in the private sector, where the only store of wealth the middle class had, the property sector, has completely collapsed. We've had about a year of declining uh, real estate right. prices. So, so, so right now, the, the, the rest of the world is the only hope for China, and even that's collapsed because the latest data show the export numbers are, are, are nowhere to be found. These dips show the impact of zero COVID. The chart that you are looking at shows future bookings from shippers here in the United States. This is pretty shocking and I wanted to share it with you because the Chinese economy is on fire right now. And that's all thanks to the Chinese real estate market, which has been accused of running a massive Ponzi scheme of over $9 trillion. Here's how the scam goes. A real estate developer comes along to take funding and pre-sell money to start building homes. But before completing their projects, they then use the collateral of what they've built so far to collect more funding and more pre-sale money to start building more of these unfinished homes. And this goes on and on and on. And believe it or not, this pre-sale strategy is how over 85% of China's homes are sold. And it can take months, if not years, for these real estate developers to finally start building. And that's why we see all these half-finished, empty buildings littered throughout parts of China, which of course, understandably upsets their investors. In fact, people in China are so fed up with their real estate situation situation that in just one month, they have boycotted over 300 of these unfinished projects spanning across 90 cities in China. In fact, there are people right now that are literally protesting in the streets asking for the banks to give them their deposit money back and to stop paying mortgage payments on homes that haven't even been built yet.